Today on our show, we have a very special guest. A uh, guest was part of a huge dynasty that created happiness among Sri Lankans for a period of 25 years, where he guided Sri Lanka to a monumental triumph in 1996. He is none other than Dav Watmo. Thank you very much, Dav. I'm beyond delighted to have you on the show, and thank you very much for accepting my invitation. Happy to be here, Martin, and uh, Happy New Year to you and all your viewers. Happy New Year, Dave. Seldom people know that uh, you were born in Sri Lanka and you migrated to Australia at the age of eight. Oh, that's true, yeah. I would have thought, well, I suppose uh, the younger generation probably don't. Absolutely. Um, but lots, of, lots of people, when I return every now and again, um, you know, it's wonderful to um, to reconnect with a lot of a lot of people in the, in, the, in the public, but I have to say they're a bit older than the younger ones. Talk to me about how was your childhood, you know, until the time that you migrated to Australia? Oh, all fond memories. Um, very, very, very happy memories. Um, I did go to Royal Primary uh, for a few years, um, and my neighbours uh, luckily had uh, three boys, so playing cricket in the front yard was not a problem because I had two sisters. They don't play cricket, <laughs> so it was always, uh, always good every day. To, um, to come back from school on the weekends uh, to play cricket and to uh, and just muck around with uh, with those guys. It was really good. Uh, where did you actually live in Colombo? Do you remember? Yeah, it was uh, Station Road, Wellabatta, um, and uh, it was not far from the beach at all. Just just a probably a hundred meters, a couple of hundred meters at the most. Uh, you were appointed as a coach of Sri Lanka in 1995. And for a period of a couple of years, you held that position. Can you talk to me about the sequence of events that occurred uh, leading up to you being appointed to the uh, role of coach of Sri Lanka? Oh, yeah. Briefly, um, there, was, uh, there was a representative of the uh, of Sri Lanka cricket in Australia, as there is in most parts of the world. And at the time, under uh, Anna Punchihaver's uh, presidency, they were pretty much looking for a foreign coach, um, somebody who can do a bit of a job that that um, Bob Simpson did with Australia. And I was very flattered to hear that. Um, and I was, uh, at the time, employed at the, a place called the Victoria Institute of Sport as a full-time cricket coach and uh, enjoying it immensely um, and learning a hell of a lot over four years, but not challenged with, because I didn't have a team. So this was uh, the timing was uh, was perfect, and uh, after a, quite a few months of negotiation, um, I accepted uh, a two-year term uh, with Sri Lanka, and um, boy, I was happy that uh, that started my career off. Uh, what was told to you, Dav, when you took over the job, as what is expected from your side? Um, not a not a great deal, really. But other than obviously, you know, to to have success uh, and. Uh, all um, teams in the uh, full member teams that are that got a very good exposure worldwide is to you know is to do well because you're judged and um, in my case um, you know that was my first assignment and I was very keen to just do the best I could I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself um, I concerned myself a little bit more with uh, the younger ones the elderly um, or the experienced guys were very good cricketers, and there was a few of them. Uh, and I only played five test matches for Australia, so uh, these other guys have played a lot more. So, you know, I was learning a bit from them as well. So, you know, I was very keen to create a very um, healthy environment for, for, for performance, to organise and do the best I can. Um, and the association, you know, proved to be fruitful. Uh, do you remember the first conversation that you had with Arjuna Ranatunga? Um, yes, um, I was keen uh, to to get going, and um, I had to wait a week or two before that happened. And I think it would have been at the golf club, Colombo Golf Club, where Arna and myself uh, met um, Arjuna. I'm not sure whether Dulip was there, um, the manager. Um, but, uh, you know, they made me feel very welcome and, you know, we were keen to, to kick it off um, as soon as all the players were available. Going back to 1995, Dav, now, uh, cricket analysis has taken a huge uh, uh, leap forward nowadays. But I guess during that time period, I guess it, would, it wouldn't have been a big thing. 
how did you manage to kind of you know cope up with that kind of an environment back in the days yeah t- well the, the um, analyzing of uh, of opposition was more or less done in that, particularly in that first tour by um by word of mouth by sitting down and 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 having players share their their knowledge of opposition teams uh, and that's basically the way it was done and that was the way it was done also in australia uh, at that point so um you know we always wanted um every member of that squad to take ownership and to feel part of it um but sri lankans being what they are were very little you know were very hesitant to come out with suggestions um and most of it was left to the senior players to um you know to create uh, strategy tactics um but we did give sufficient time to um analyzing opposition and that really was part of uh, part of the success particularly in the world cup as uh, it happened later on did you do any video analysis back in the days a little bit um uh, we were um uh not before the uh the pakistan tour that was my first tour where the team was triumphant both in test matches and one days yes um but since that tour we had a little bit of a whisper that um uh that icc were a little concerned about mudley's action before we went to australia just before the world cup and i remember uh, filming mudley uh with a panasonic camera and um looking at it myself and I satisfied myself that whilst you know there was a little bit of an illusion that he was straightening he didn't it was a, ro- a huge rotation of the wrist and shoulder so I was okay with it and that was my extent at the time first time morally was called in that boxing day test match and then thereafter again he was called in the one day uh, matches during that when they first called morally for illegal action did you ever think that it's going to come back well I mean it was a very bl- bold move by the uh, by the, by the umpire Daryl Hare um um a call that really pro- that that was proven wrong um it was an incredible feeling uh, of of shock you know that actually this is actually happening and he was our trump card he was our main bowler he was incredibly uh, talented and certainly uh, you know he must have gone through hell with what was in his mind leading up to bowling each delivery after that so I, I, it was a it was a state of shock what was going on with the team during that one day international he when he bowled leg spin he was called for illegal action what was the thought process within the squad well that was just that just typified um you know the sort of um, perhaps predetermined decisions that were made during that tour sadly uh, to call wonderly when he was born that leg breaks was um you know it was very sad because it it sort of stooped to that level um that you can do that you know in an international game um it sort of beggars belief it was it was just confirmed in our in my mind anyway that uh, some of the stuff was you know prearranged one of the biggest revolution in one day international cricket is that uh, making sana jay surya and ramesh kalividarna as opening batsmen in the 1995 tour uh there's a nice story behind that uh dulip mendis was the one who kind of came up with the suggestion is that right correct absolutely correct what was the yeah. s- story is about you know did he come and talk to you first or uh, what was that confidence that he had that sanaj jayasurya and ramesh kalivitana could do something different and the thought process behind that well um i'm sure that everyone knows that uh, dula is not a man of a lot of words but is a good thinker a very smart smart uh, man um he just came up to me after i think two games in that uh, world series um were against australia and west indies and so, and just said to me in this way how if we open with color with honor and to me that in- instantly um rang a bell because color I-, i knew in my short time was a very very sweet timer of the ball uh, whether it's playing you know in front of the wicket or square of the wicket behind the wicket short full he was uh, very talented and when he came into bat um normally the field is spread and he would invariably play some magnificent shots and then hole out in the deep so instantly when dulip mentioned that to me i just saw and visualized the ball going into the vacant outfield with no fielders 
and I loved it immediately. And uh, and together we we uh, were very positive that that should happen. Um, and I think the first one anyway, he won man of the match. It could have been the second one as well. So that was a really good um, uh, chain of uh, events and, and, and a, a thought that uh, originated from Dulip. Whether somebody told Dulip, I don't know, but he certainly was the one that came up to me and I supported it immediately. Do you consider that has the biggest uh, turning point uh, in terms of your stint with uh, Sri Lanka? Maybe 95, 96 or after 99, 2003? I'm not sure you can say that, but it certainly was um, was relevant to the way in which the team um, performed because no other team was doing it at the time. You know, to be to show that aggression. And normally, you're looking at you know uh, 45, 50, 50, and 15, and then you take it from there. But uh, in our case, we were you know turning it on its head, so that was very significant at the at the time. Uh, but to suggest that that was uh, the you know the best thing in my career. It certainly was was very good to be part of and to nurture it and to water it and feed it um, and to see it you know prosper um, and that was just one of uh, one of a few highlights in my time with Sri Lanka. The most supported, most valuable innings that I've seen is the 1996. Uh, I would say one one of the best innings was 1996 semi-final innings of Arvind de Silva. It was kind of immune to the 100,000 supporters, rows of the 100,000 supporters at Eden Gardens. Uh, there's a story behind that Arjuna Ranatunga wanted to chase because he was so, so confident that we could chase any amount of total. Uh, but you had other thoughts during that 1996 semi-finals. Yeah, as much as I was honest with uh, everything you know that you said, I, I too was a little bit concerned and and very honest when I uh, when I looked at the pitch and uh, had a little bit of a scratch <laughs> uh, in about four or five different places on that pitch, which looked beautiful, I have to say, you know, as you approached it, walking up uh, in the sunshine uh, at lunchtime was uh, straw colored and looked beautiful, you know, chock full of runs, but actually the wicket wasn't as hard on the surface as, uh, as, as you thought. And um, for that reason, I wasn't sure that it was going to last uh, 100 overs. But at this time, to you know, to bat first and get a total on the board. Um, but the feeling, you know, with the with the other members of the think tank was that we're such a good team, chasing whatever you score in the first innings, we will score one more than yes. you and win it. Um, and that was more or less correct. You know, the team was a very good chasing score. Uh, but on this occasion, um, you know, we were very fortunate to have lost the toss and was asked about first because India also knew that we were very good chasing and they did not want Sri Lanka to chase. I guess that uh, previous match where Sanajaya Surya took on to all the bowlers, uh, I guess it was in Delhi, kind of, you know, resulted in a bit of doubt for us already to make that decision, I guess, at that time. Yeah, well, we're still chasing 270-odd, I think. And yes. uh, such a, 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 a Tendulkar got 100. Still, uh, you know, small small ground, but nevertheless, you still got to get it in the World Cup. Uh, what was Arjuna Ranatunga's thought process when he lost it, lost the toss? He actually wanted to chase. Well, you can't help that. I mean, that's that's the luck of the of the, of the way it goes, and that you win some, you lose some. I'm sure that he he would have loved to have won it, obviously, but uh, you can't do you know a whole lot when you lose the toss, and wh whatever you do, uh, whether you uh, you want to do it or not, you have to start the game as well as you possibly can. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so that, that you couldn't do much about it, Martin. Uh, 1996 uh, finals, Australia is one of the biggest dynasties in terms of cricketing is concerned. Arjuna Ranatunga goes on to say that Shane Warne is not big as a player as people think or made him out to be. Uh, to make a statement such as that against a team which is very strong in terms of everything, what was your thought process at that time? Did you think, okay, you're doing the right thing? Oh, no, like it's always good to have a leader, you know, to be very strong like that and to make to make a comment and to lead and to tell everyone that, hey, look, we are playing, okay, Australia, they're a very good side, but we're not, we're not scared of you, you know. You may have some good players and, uh, you know, and they certainly did. But to, uh, you know, to publicly voice that opinion um, that we are not scared of. We're going to come and we're going to, you know, do the best that we can against you and we're going to win. And what better 
place to do it after being, you know, pretty much humbled just a few months ago over test matches um, and the one day is, although we did play in the final, um, what a place to, you know, to reverse it and, and win a World Cup against the team that beat you. Though Arjuna had that thought, uh, was that same kind of uh, thought process drilled down to the team and what was the thought process of the team? Did they have the same idea as much as what Arjuna Ranatunga had at that point of time? Well, that automatically flows when you hear that sort of uh, strength in you know in those words. It automatically filters down, and let's uh, also not forget that the first five batsmen, first six, even seven batsmen, were very good. You know, so the, even if you had a little bit of a, a question mark as a youngster, you just need look around the corner. You'll see all these wonderful players that you've got the confidence that you just get out there and you back. Uh, back each other and um, you know and, and defend those words um, you know that was sort of filtered down into you um, and you know just get out there and, and, and perform so it wasn't a case of you know just getting to every play and saying hey you have to do this because the captain said that it was just automatically filtered down and understood um, that you know they have a good team we have a good team we're not scared of you what was that Sri Lankan team's outlook when you took over and by the time we won the 1996 World Cup, what is that we did differently, Dav? That was my very first you know, um, exposure at that level and with the team. And the very first game, we were beaten by innings in Peshawar. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the services of Aravinda, who was given permission to, uh, to play in uh, an AtWest final uh, for Kent. So he was unavailable in that game and he was uh, coming straight to the team for the second and third test match. Um, so the first game was uh, was rather, you know, a difficult time, I, I, I recall. And, you know, getting beaten in three days or three and a bit days uh, is not a good feeling. Um, but what we did do after that loss was uh, we agreed as a team that we, I don't care what you do, you just do everything 100%. And we had a a training session that um, you know, everyone went flat out, even the bowlers were trying to knock off the batsmen and hurt them. Uh, but it had to happen, um, and that was a bit of a turning point. And together with uh, you know, being strengthened with, with Ari that was coming back for the second game. The training regime right now, uh, Dav, at this point of time, Sri Lanka cricket team is touring South Africa. And uh, by the time that this particular program goes on air, they must have finished the tour. We see a lot of injuries and uh, on social media a lot of things have been circulated about uh, the fitness of the old players. Uh, what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? What is that they did differently? For, for a start, there wasn't as many matches as there are at the moment. The frequency of games wasn't as, as much. These days you have three formats and some players play all, all formats, others don't. Um, but there is a, a greater amount of matches played. And it's not just internationally, but it's also domestically in, in various uh, you know, T20 leagues around the world, which, uh, which is paying well also. So, you know, there's a need for, uh, for players to, to play more cricket. Um, with that comes, you know, a, a bit of a, um, a difficulty in, in managing your workloads and managing your body. Um, sometimes players are reckless, they don't think about their own body uh, and sometimes there are others who also don't bother about ensuring that certain players you know, take rest at the appropriate time. Uh, but there is a place for strength and conditioning, absolutely there's a place. Uh, definitely there's a place for technique uh, to always improve and, and become more efficient uh, as bowlers because you know, the action, particularly for a fast bowler, is a very uh, unusual one for the body to come up to come up with. You know, it's not a good thing for the body, but you need to be able to, you know, to be as efficient as possible uh, to relieve, you know, the stresses of it all. Um, and also the, um, you know, the and I say workloads, the, the ability to understand what you can and what you can't do, when to take rest and when not to. So it's it's a combination of these things that, um, you know, will help to uh, to keep those nasty injuries away and we've seen a horrible spate of injuries just in the last week 
in South Africa. What was Alex Contreras' role in 1996 uh, time period in making sure that the players are fit? Well, he had a dual role basically. It was he, he said to me it was in my interest as a physio uh, to be able to to see them train and and to work uh, at levels which I know uh, you know they can cope up with in competition. And as I said before, there wasn't as much of a frequency of matches, uh, but Alex certainly had a dual role and and really um, uh, enjoyed doing it. Um, and it was in his interest, he was right when he said he was interested to know that these guys are doing certain things. He could build certain things in a, in a fitness regime that would assist him in uh, understanding you know, what the potential injuries are with certain players. And he'd go about you know, ensuring that you know, we, we work on those before uh, you know, an injury happens. So it was really good that he was smart uh, to be able to do that dual role. I've heard that you used to pick uh, the national team players and drop far away from where pick them and then ask them to come on foot. Is that a particular story true? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we did. It's just something different, you know. Every now and again, unless you trick the mind, then problem. You know, there was, there was one day we took them 10-pin bowling, but they had no, no idea. You know, the bus turned up at the uh, NCC and, um, and they down tools, don't worry about your bag. You know, and took them bowling, so they totally tricked the mind. In this case, um, we we decided to do a, a session at the beach, which was not unusual. So we met at um, um, at the beach in um, can't remember where it could have been Wellawatta. I think it was. Okay. Bus turned up, and everyone's saying, "What's going on? Get in the bus." Now the captain was in was in on this because uh, he had an, a good idea of who the fit, fittest guys were. So we just drove, drove to Mount Lavinia, and the fittest guys were dropped off first. <laughs> so we dropped off, yeah, whoever, I you know, took control of that, and then the bus would come back another kilometre and drop off, you, 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 out. <laughs> and then so it went, you know, and we were the, Arjuna and myself were the last ones to get off, and we jogged together back to, um, you know, back to the, where, we, where we started all the cars at the beach. It was really good. Something so, different. We were a part of the Sri Lanka team when they won the 1996 World Cup. Aravinda was a kind of a top class batsman at that point of time. And then uh, during a second stint between 1999 to 2003, you had players like Mahalajava, Kumar, Sangakara. There's always a debate that goes on who is the best batsman. Uh, that Sri Lanka has ever produced, whether it's Aravinda De Silva or Kumar Sangakara. I don't want to ask whether who is the best batsman, but what are the different styles and uh, in terms of their regime you saw between Aravinda and uh, Sangakara? Uh, I, I see similarities between um, Sanga and Ari in the in the fact of um, with batting, wanting to bat. Mahela is slightly different. I'm not sure he was, uh, you know, keen to to put in all those hours just having hitting balls. Um, so there's more than one way to, to become successful. Um, Aravinda, uh, Arjuna, I mean, Aravinda Sangha and Mahela, though, had one thing in common, and that was the mental um, strength to overcome uh, adversity. And uh, it was really, really lovely to see, you know, you just got to not even say a word, just look into the eyes and you know that this, there's something different about certain players. Moodley had it with the quicks. Uh, with the, with the, from the bowling point of view. Vasi learnt it, became extremely good at it. Um, but certainly, you know, these three, you know, superstars, that was what was in common. Um, the physical aspect of it all in preparation differed a little bit. Uh, but certainly, you know, the strength in your mind, which you absolutely need to have, uh, was quite evident. Uh, we spoke about Kumar Sangakara, obviously Aravindi De Silva and Mahala Jayawadhan, but one man uh, we cannot keep away from the topics is Sana Jayasurya. Can he be considered as one of the, from your perspective, the, the biggest player that Sri Lanka has ever produced in terms of one-day internationals? Um, I see, well, for one-day internationals, um, uh, yeah, without have, I haven't got the, the figures quite in front of me, but certainly destructive. No question. Um, teams would just plan so much to just ensure that he, uh, 
that it doesn't, you know, get runs. So, um, you know, certainly I think that part of that statement could be true. But, you know, equally, you know, uh, you know, Sangha, Mahela, um, Gura in that World Cup final also. And the, some, of the, some of those games were batted really well and, and was instrumental in helping the team win. Uh, we didn't lose the game. So certainly, uh, so, uh, uh, some of Joe Surya, destructive in every sense of the word. Really good to see when he's going. Team's got no idea where the ball is. Yes, you know, we enjoyed for about, you know, since the time that he came into the side and until the time that he retired, he entertained all of us. Uh, many people speak about uh, your first stint, 1996 World Cup Prime, but uh, 1999 to 2003, also Sri Lanka were revived after that uh, disastrous World Cup in 1999. Sana Jai Suri was made captain as soon as you uh, became the coach. Mahela was uh, made the vice captain uh, at that point of time. Uh, can you tell me, uh, Dev, uh, the difference, what is the difference between the leadership of uh, Sana Jai Suri and Arjuna Ranatunga, what did you see? Pretty big difference, really. One was uh, a very su successful and experienced leader, uh, and the other one was was just beginning his um, his career as uh, as a captain. Um, certainly, didn't do him any any harm. You know, Sanath had some wonderful wonderful performances as a captain. He certainly had the um, the rest of the team behind him and the support of the team, which is very important. And Sanath would you know lead by example. There's not many things that he wouldn't ask the team to do that he couldn't do himself, um, and it makes a, a you know a big difference and huge advantage when you as a leader are actually performing really well. Also, so Sanath was uh, very likable. He was very talented. Uh, he was a great performer, destructive player, in in many ways, and had the support of everyone. So you know, it had all the ingredients of him. You know, he was going to be successful. So what does Arjuna Ranatunga say to his team during the team meetings and what does Sana Jayasuri say to his team? So, uh, Arjuna certainly, you know, had the control. There's no question about, uh, you know, you could feel the atmosphere when Arjuna's in the room. Uh, and at times there are a few of the boys who are a little bit apprehensive about making uh, comments. Uh, but certainly Arjuna was a little bit misunderstood, I believe, to a, you know, in certain ways because he was very much uh, he was more democratic than a lot of people thought a lot of people you know to me was suggesting he was very you know uh, very autocratic and a very uh, you know one-minded single-minded but he was very democratic he listened he encouraged um, the other members of the team to, to come out with suggestions didn't matter how you know what they what little they thought that may have been so he was a little bit misunderstood. Sanath um, also, when he became uh, became captain, he also now had to, you know, create and, and shape um, strategy and uh, and tactics. And he began to to learn and began to blossom in that way as well. So it was a bit of a slow process, but Sanath also had you know good leaders and, and good good teachers. Two thousand three semi-finals, uh, we could have won that and uh, made it to the finals, isn't it? Could have, yeah. I always felt that um, the team wasn't batting as well as as well as they, you know, as well as they should have and could have. And despite not, you know, playing as well with the bat, we still made it to the semi-final. In a great effort, and here we are playing Australia uh, on a ground which you couldn't ask for a better a, a better ground to play Australia on, at um, you know Eastern Province. Um, a wicket that was renowned to be slow and takes a bit of turn was the best that could ever happen to us. Sadly, we did lose uh, lose the toss, and um, the average score batting first was only you know two hundred and I don't know fifteen, sixteen, twenty, or whatever. Look, I'm a little unsure what Australia got, but they only got two hundred, not much more than that. Two hundred twelve, yeah. And yeah, so you still felt that, you know, we were in the game, but sadly it didn't happen for us because we weren't batting as well as what we should have. And that was um, a consistent sort of comment that, you know, people would, would come up with when they look at and they reflect on that uh, World Cup. But it was a great effort to get there, given that. 
did that miss stomping of Andrew Simons played a huge part because he was the only player who scored a 50 in that match? Well, you could say that. I mean, that was important. So was the, you know, a run out as well with Aravinda. Um, and also maybe one or two other um, parts of that game that you could say, look, that one may have changed the course of it. I'm not sure that uh, we can pin it down to that. But, you know, all these things make a difference. So it doesn't matter, um, you know, one or two things. All these things make a difference. As a coach, 1999 to 2003, a lot of senior players retired. But gladly, Mahela Sangha, when they entered the team, Arjuna uh, and Aravinda were ending their careers. So they had the opportunity of, uh, you know, play at the top of the order. Uh, but the same thing did not happen to Sri Lanka when Dinesh Shandimal or Lahiru Tirimana got into the side. Uh, if you have been following cricket, Sri Lanka cricket at that point of time, uh, did you ever thought that you know Mahela and Sangha should have kind of you know pulled themselves down on the batting order and give the chance to Shandimal or Tirimana thinking about the future? Not really. I, look, I think also that there has to be an op a place available for it. I mean, it's okay to say that now, um, but when, let's look at Sangha's case. Sangha, when he first came in. Um, I felt found a little bit difficult to start his innings off against spin, you know, mm -hmm. despite, you know, being uh, a product of a, of a, you know, country which produces a lot of spin bowling. Um, he was much more at ease against the pace. So, um, you know, we looked, looked at that as a, uh, as a potential of him going up the order to face the pace first, so it'll help him. But there was a position there for him. You know, Aravinda and Arjuna weren't those number three, number four players. They were Aravinda certainly four, yes, but there was an opportunity. Um, but maybe uh, you know, in Thirumana's case and Chandimal, maybe there may not have been. I, I can't say for sure. Um, but yes, it would have been nice for them to be, you know, specifically um, nurtured in and eased into it. But there also has to be, you know, opportunity there for them as well. Uh, as a coach, you know, when during your second stage, 1999 to 2003, uh, can you tell me what was the vision about, you know, Sri Lanka cricket? Did you ever think of, you know, bringing in new players? What was, how far did you think about uh, the talents in Sri Lanka? Well, there, there was the selectors also involved, very much involved um, in that four-year period, as selectors are involved now. Um, and they have a good idea of uh, the potential talent. The senior players also have a good idea of who can and who can't, probably more so than anyone else. Um, but uh, I certainly try to play my part in uh, in trying to shape it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, there were a time when I was a selector, but then most of the time I was not. But I was uh, at least given a hearing, and that was very good of them to do that. Um, but there will always be potential. There will always be talent. There will always be talent all over the world. But particularly, you know, in Sri Lanka, a small island, they've got some wonderful, always have some wonderful young players coming through. Have you been following up on uh, Sri Lanka cricket uh, lately, Daph? Well, I've been, uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, certainly watching, uh, following a little bit of the, the Premier League and then, you know, the series currently on now. I'm very upset to, to read so many injuries that occurred, five of them, you know, from that first test. And then you haven't got, you know, Angie even before it started, and then Luckman as well. So you can make that seven. <laughs> That's, uh, that is unprecedented. Obviously, the current crew of Sri Lanka cricket, the national cricket team, who do you think has some similarities uh, of players who had gone on to made big strides in their careers? Um, again, uh, well, if I had to name one, maybe the Le Le lefty, um, Kusal uh, Pereira, and also the right-handed Kusal Mendes as well. Mendes and Pereira, both of them. Have you had any chance of uh, speaking to them? One thing that goes on uh, in social media, which is very prevalent in the modern world, is that uh, Kusal Mendes specifically, that he got the talent, but he's not, you know, doing justice to his talent. Um, maybe, uh, but I tell you, it's, it's easy to make comments. Uh, you know, it's a lot harder when you're out in that middle. Um, but he's played some, you know, wonderful knocks, and he actually won that test match there in South Africa. Let's not forget. And who knows what's in his mind? You know, who knows the the uh, the feeling within the group? You, you know, to be successful, you need the support, and I mean real support of everyone to know that you can do it. And then you just go ahead and do it. 
So it's hard to, to make comments, but certainly those two boys, I think, you know, are wonderful. Uh, the right-hander got tremendous potential, and I think he should go on and have a long career as well as a lefty. What is that message, if I ask you to give to the fans, you know, in terms of the performances when we do not do well, you know, what would you say to the fans? Well, it is tough. Um, yeah, they want the team to do really well. I can understand that. They're a very proud nation, a, a team that's won a World Cup that a lot many others in the world haven't done that. Um, so they have the ability, but to be a little bit tolerant and to honestly, you know, judge for themselves before a series starts, before a game starts, so they honestly feel that this team is good enough to win this particular game. And I think if you're able to to honestly evaluate that, then you know you'll be spared a lot of uh, disappointment and heartbreak. Um, you know, uh, because of your your honesty in, in actually digging a little bit deeper than thinking, ah, oh, we're Sri Lanka, we'll win. You know, the team will develop, the team will get better, the team will eventually, you know, win more than they lose. But be tolerant, please. Be honest and be tolerant. Who was that uh, player that you worked a lot during your stint? Either it could be 1996 or 1999 to 2003. Oh, look, um, I tried to, to be even, really. Um, I think Sanath was a bit upset. I didn't throw enough balls to him. <laughs> I do recall throwing, chucking a lot to, um, to Russell Arnold when, uh, you know, in that, in that cold of England. My arm got really sore, but keep going. Um, but to try and you know to try and be even as possible as much as you can. Perhaps didn't didn't uh, you know achieve that from time to time. But I try to be as even as possible with everybody. Thank you very much, Dave. It was such a wonderful conversation that I had with you. It's a pleasure having you today, and I wish you all the best on your future endeavors. And uh, hope you have a wonderful New Year this time around. Thank you. Good and happy New Year to everyone too.